All right, let's get it going. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you coming out and uh, sharing your time with us today. Uh, my name is Chris Smythe. I'm the director of the Sports and Wellness Program here at NSM Insurance Group. I've uh, been the uh, director now for about two and a half years, been loving every minute of it. With me today is Adam Blum, our senior underwriter and the man behind the scenes, the one that's been on it the longest time and uh, the, the, the brainchild. So um, just a couple of things to, to start us off, uh, a few housekeeping items. The first 30 agents um, are gonna get your $30 Amazon gift card. You'll hear from Liz from our marketing department uh, probably today or tomorrow. Um, so look out for that. Um, this is going to be recorded, so um, if you do have any questions, you want to get this, just get the slides, we can send this to you afterwards. Um, and just keep yourself muted during this. Um, I'm going to have an opportunity for questions at the end, so just keep yourself muted throughout. You can jump on that at the end, and uh, we'd be willing to uh, listen to whatever you have. So let's get it going. All right, so the agenda for the day. Uh, quick NSM overview. You know, what we do, how we do it, how big we are now, um, some different things about that. The program itself, uh, where we are, where we were, and where we're going to be, in addition to the market outlook, uh, where we think the market's going. There's been a lot of changes, as we all know. Uh, we'll jump into a little sports challenge. You gotta do a sports challenge. You have to have some sort of trivia, some sort of competition on the sports team. That's basically the way we are all day, every day on our squad. Um, we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it, the appetite, the coverages, making sure that everybody knows what we can do, what we do well, um, and what we're willing to do for you. Um, some recent wins, um, just to give a little bit of an idea of, um, you know, what the team here is able to get done uh, quickly, nimbly, um, you know, with the, with the tools that we have. A why us? We'll let you know why. Uh, if you're not already doing business with us, hopefully by the end of this, you will be. And, and we'll do that Q&A. So get ready to unmute yourself and, and ask me whatever questions you have. All right, so NSM at a glance. Um, 32 years uh, we've been around. Our CEO, Jeff McKernan, started a small retail agency 32 years ago. He and one other guy. And um, after a while, they decided the program business is where they wanted to be. Um, it, it's... You know, it's a very good business to be in. Uh, it took a little while for them to get to that point, but now um, to see these numbers just blows my mind. $1.5 billion plus in premium and a million clients. Um, you know, those, are, those million clients are spread out amongst this country and as well as the UK. We have offices in the UK now, which you can see there. Uh, 14 locations in total. Um, 25 plus programs uh, with the majority being in the States. Uh, the next slide you'll see, I'll, I'll go over a few of them, but 1,100 employees. I mean, that number was closer to 1,000 not long ago. Uh, we're, we're really expanding. We're, we're, we're getting bigger, and we want to be the premier MGA uh, NSN, how about niche specialty markets in the country. And, um, you know, we're, we pride ourselves on the relationships that we have with our agent partners. Um, we can set you up for success. We, you, you walk around, you see build success on that screen there, you walk around this office and it's all you see. It, it, you know, it's, it's all about uh, grinding, getting it done, building success, success and going forward. So, uh, you know, if you don't already work with us and you're jumping on this for the first time, I'm very happy to hear that. And, and we're looking forward to working with you. Um, so we can go to a little bit of the next slide. So here are some of our programs. Um, this is, um, uh, a spread of programs. They're not all B2B on that screen there, but um, if, if you have a niche that you're interested in, we likely have a market for you. We likely have a program for you. Um, you know, I, I can pick out a few ATP, addiction treatment. Um, they're for-profit, non-profit addiction treatment centers all across the states. Um, how about HabPro, um, non-coastal residential condominium apartments. Um, PUA does um, architects and engineers professional liability and excess. So they have a whole miscellaneous uh, area that they can put you with a carrier that um, has really been, been doing well in, in recent years. KBK, one of the newer programs um, that NSM purchased some years ago, um, they offer towing, used car programs. They have a great garage program um, that's, that's really building well right now. And then care providers. Care providers is one of the original programs at NSM, um, you know, they, 
Care Providers does an incredible job with the nonprofits. Um, they can do the social services, they put private schools, um, things like that. And, and they're, we're all in growth mode. Um, we always have been, always will be, um, but they especially are, are doing a really good job right now. Um, I, I didn't get into many things. I didn't get into a lot of it. NSMInc.com is the right place to go or email me and I'd be happy to get, in get you in touch with the, the right people there. So let's do an overview. Sports and wellness is what we came here for, right? Adam, can you tell us about the team? Be my pleasure, thank you. Um, let's start off with uh, the gentleman who's been speaking, Chris, who has been with NSM since 2014 and had the immaculate timing to join sports and wellness program in February, 2020. Um, definitely nothing notable happened shortly after him joining the program, um, but he's done a fantastic job of guiding the program through the last you know, almost three years now. And uh, really um, the last 18 months have just been fantastic for us in terms of growth and um, where, we, where we sit in the marketplace. He's also known as uh, one of the most renowned high school basketball referees in the greater Philadelphia area. This guy, you basically can't book him. Give him three months in advance before he comes and reps your children's games because, you know, he's just that high in demand. Uh, moving along to myself, um, the senior program underwriter. I've been with NSM since I graduated from Temple University in 2012. Originally, I was working on uh, another program, but I came over to the sports program in 2016, so I've been here quite some time. Um, I like to say that I'm a full-time golfer, part-time underwriter. Uh, so, you know, I really get out, get out there and hit the links. Um, Colin Kowalski uh, has been with NSM since about 2019. And uh, he was working in a different department, came over when we were in a bit of a time of need and just has really been fantastic for us. Um, really learned, learned the in and outs and is, is kind of like our catch all guy right now for the whole program. Uh, he also uh, played baseball throughout college and uh, is now definitely with me on, on the golf course quite often. Guy's great. Um, Mark McNaney, who's been, uh, He's been in the industry since 2015, uh, you know, focusing on on fitness. He joined NSM uh, also in 2020. And uh, Mark uh, is definitely a big college sports enthusiast. Uh, he, uh, he goes to the NCAA tournament championships in Indianapolis every single year. He never misses it. Um, Pat Morgan, one of our more recent guys, he's also been in the industry since 2016. Uh, he joined NSM in January of 2021. He's just been a fantastic resource for us. He, he know, already came in knowing a ton about the marketplace uh, and has a background in sports also. He played college basketball, and now he's, a, his, he's an assistant basketball coach at one of the local high schools, uh, Haverford, Haverford High School. And finally, uh, our most recent hire on the team, uh, which should be expanding quite soon, uh, Jake Morgan, who is uh, has come in and really uh, been great resource for us. He's kind of in a support role right now. He's really learning the ropes to the industry. He's learning the coverage. And dude's got an incredible fastball getting up to about 90 miles an hour. So, you know, this is what we do all day in terms of the program. This is our space. And uh, Chris, why don't you step back in here and talk a little bit more about our program? Absolutely. And uh, just so you know, Pat Morgan and Jake Morgan, not related, just one of those things. So they, they get each other's emails constantly and it's, uh, it's great. Um, so sports and wellness, what are we? Um, you know, how long have we been here? Overall, over 20 plus years. Um, you know, NSM hasn't had it that long, but the program dates back uh, years and years. Uh, partnered with Allied World in, in 2018, beginning of 2019. And uh, we were previously with AIG. So the, the, the program history is there, the, the, the accounts are there. We still have accounts that date back way, way, way back into the, the beginning of the program that, has, that have stuck with us this whole time. Um, you know, there's something to be said for that. And, and there, there are agents that we have that have been with us for that long and that have gone through different underwriters and different uh, underwriting analysts and different directors. And, and we've been able to, to, to maintain those relationships. You'll, you'll hear me say that a lot, relationships today. That's what it's all about um, as an MGA to the retail agent. Um, it's, it's super, super important. Um, but we're specifically designed to be an all-in program. So um, I want you as the agent to be able to come to us with an entire package and say, hey, can you write this for me? And I want to be able to say yes. 
Um, we can do almost every line of coverage. You're going to see that in, in a later slide as well. Um, but we are the specialists in the sports and wellness space. You saw that uh, slide with the team members. That's all they do. Uh, we don't look at any other accounts. We're not carrier underwriters where we may see a middle market uh, real estate and we see other things. We do sports and wellness. That, that's all we do all day, every day. And, and we're here in the office and we're chatting and we're, we're going over it. And we all, everybody is a specialist in our space. Go to the next one. So what's our mission? Uh, we have to have a mission, right? We're all, uh, you know, little little companies within NSM. Each program is our own little company. And, and, you know, to have a mission makes a lot of sense. So we want to be the leading provider of robust insurance and risk management solutions in our industry, the sports and wellness industry. Um, how do we do that? We partner with a carrier, Allied World, our carrier. How do we keep that relationship going? We have discipline and diligent underwriting. We wouldn't last six months if we wrote things that we shouldn't write and we, and we get claimed. Um, we're, again, we're specialists in, in, in what we do. We need to stay within our underwriting guidelines. Um, if we're not within our underwriting under guidelines, but it's at a great account, we then can go to the carrier and say, hey, here's why we think we should write this account. And that's a partnership as well. That's a relationship as well. We can have those conversations. Um, we, we want to have the most comprehensive product, which I think we do. Uh, we, we, we can offer basically everything you're going to need within this niche market. Um, Pop Notch Talent, I mean, you saw these guys um, and we're growing, as Adam said. Um, it, you got me in, in a couple of weeks. I might have a couple of new faces on there. Um, but um, always looking to grow. Always the, the program is growing, so the knowledge needs to grow. As I say, again, we'll bring it back to sports, a lot of sports uh, euphemisms here, but you got to have good bench strength. Um, you have to bring in the underwriting analysts that are eventually going to be my underwriters, my senior underwriters, as Adam is, um, to, to, to go along in that process. And, and that's what we do here at NSM, especially in the sports and wellness program. Um, and then the service. And the, the programs don't last without service. Um, we need to be a partner to you. Uh, as as your client is a, is a partner to you. Um, you know, that's something where it, we need to turn things around. If we're not turning things around, you come to us. We're from Philly. We get it. We can take the heat. Um, one big thing I wanted to touch on is uh, we heard you. Uh, technology, we need it, right? Everybody needs it. That's the way the, the, the market's going. It's the way the insurance world is going. And we are coming out with a web portal. It's going to be called Sports Connect. Um, you, you heard it here first. Um, this thing's going to be live in a couple of months, hopefully one, maybe two months from now. And um, it's, it's going to be great. It's, a, it's an all-inclusive. It, you're going to be able to uh, fill in an application online. Um, you know, you're, that way we're going to get all the data from you without having to email and get in touch with your underwriter and things like that. They're going to get it in front of them. They're going to be able to take a quick look at it and boom. You know, things are things are going to be much, much faster that way. Um, and as as the portal evolves, you're then going to have information on your renewal next year. You're going to be able to tell us, nope, no changes in it. All right. Here's your renewal. Quote. Um, things like that are going to make it much easier. You're going to have the user interface is going to be beautiful. It's going to be a great looking. You know, we're, we're developing that right now. But um, you'll be able to see your stats. How much business do you have? With us? How many accounts did you buy in this year? How many did you submit? Should we be buying more? Um, it's something that really should be there, should be available to all of us all the time. And, and sometimes it isn't. We're, we're going to provide that for you. So that's going to be live very, very soon. Adam and I, especially Adam, has been doing a ton of work on it for the past two years, really. It's been, it's been a good two years that we've been working on that. And we're really, really excited for everybody to see that. So stay tuned for that. You'll be, you'll be getting more communications uh, regarding that. Go to the next one. So here's Vaughn Vernon. Hopefully Vaughn's on. You know what? I forgot to call him today. Um, I'm hoping he's on. He agreed to that picture. I actually was with him while I was talking to Liz from our marketing department. And I said, Vaughn, this is the picture we have of you. Is this the one you want? And he said, absolutely, dude. That's it. So Vaughn is uh, the founder and director of Affiliate Guard, Agard, um, and they killed in the CrossFit space. Um, he, he's been, he's come to known as one of the guys in the CrossFit space in regards to insurance and um, you know it, it general uh, general ownership in in the space, he's he's become the man. Um, you know they have their own corporate type stuff, 
but then they also, you know, you, you can go outside of that corporate stuff and, and that's where Vaughn comes in. So, you know, uh, there was about a week span that I was in this role before everybody in the world went home uh, for a year and a half or whatever it was. And in that week, for whatever reason, the, the stars aligned and Vaughn and I were able to get together. Um, and, and we've kind of always carried that with us. He's the first guy I met on the program and I wasn't allowed to meet anybody for a significant amount of time. So, um, you know, we, I was able to say when, when things went bad, I said, you know, what do we do? How, how do we help these gym owners? Um, they're not allowed to be open right now. They're, they're forced to close. And we worked with Vaughn. We worked with our other agents and the carrier and said, what do we do? Well, we'll give some premium back. We'll give some liability premium back. And I think that made a lot of sense. Um, and once we figured out how to do it and who to do it for, and, and, and you know, it, it brought us some good favor, I think, in the market. And then guess what happened? All of our competitors started down. Um, and it, it made sense overall. It was a brutal time. Uh, and, 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 you know, he, he thanks us for that. And, and you guys can read it yourself. You know, we, we give him the service that he deserves. He's got a great team out in Utah. And I was able to get out there to see him recently. And, uh, you know, I want, I want more Vaughns. I want more people that specialize in what they do and are really, really good at what they do because that just aligns with us so perfectly. All right, so we're going to talk about the state of the market, where, where we think it's going to be. Pre-COVID, so market was soft, right? I mean, the, the whole industry was, was pretty soft and, and gyms were growing. People were going to the gym, uh, a lot of carriers. Um, there were some issues. Uh, we all saw them, liability issues in regards to abuse. Uh, no, re, no need to rehash that. Um, but, you know, things happen. And I think we all learned on the carrier side, on the agent side, the client side, everybody learned from it. Um, it did change things a little bit, but it didn't really harden the market. Then COVID hit. We had closures. We had people leaving gyms. We had cancellations. We had gyms closing because they couldn't pay their rent. Um, the youth leagues, we, we, do, we do a ton of amateur sports and youth and camps. They never started. They never even renewed their policies. Um, and they didn't know if they were going to come back again. Um, gyms were forced to close, as I said before, and no one really knew what was going to happen. Um, 2021, man, did we come back with a vengeance, I, I, I should say. We had a great year last year, and I think it was, it was natural. I, I would hope all my competitors had a great year last year. Um, I know I have three children. I put them in camps and leagues right away. As soon as we, we were allowed to do it, they had masks on outside. I said, I don't care. Let's go play. Go play with your friends. And I think a lot of people did that. Um, exposures went up that way. Um, people got back outdoors. People went back to join the gym. They were doing virtual workouts, which were fantastic. Some gyms absolutely grew during the pandemic because of how good they were at doing virtual workouts. Well, a lot of people got sick of that. And they went back to the gym. And that's what we were kind of hoping on. Exposures, again, going up with the market hardening, economy, cats, many things went into that, but that's when the market really started. To, we started to see the hardening last year. We were wondering where we're we gonna get to. So you'll see in the next slide. The disruptions. We all know about the trickle down effects, cats. I actually come from the cat property world. In my first six years here at NSM, I was on our coastal condominium team. And I saw it firsthand. It was shooting fish in a barrel for the first five years. We, uh, it was a soft market, rates were low, deductibles were low, but there was, wasn't that much competition. So we, we were doing really well. We had some hurricanes, we had some earthquakes, wildfire, and all of that adds up. Um, and and the, the market now, and, and you can, you know, a lot of, hopefully a lot of you have been in a business for a long time, will probably agree with me to saying, it's probably the hardest market in almost all of our careers at this point. Um, and I only see it hardening more. I've been reading an article recently about reinsurance uh, coming up on, on Jan 1, and a lot of them weren't even out yet because they don't want to be the first ones out. You know, the, if the market's going to be that bad, I shouldn't say bad, if the market's going to be that hard, uh, why would you be the first one to come out with a renewal quote, right? So I think a lot of carriers are wary. They're going to get rate. Uh, this past year, I would say rate really fell on the general liability side. Uh, all the liability lines. And I see the property picking up for that this, this upcoming year. Um, carriers are pulling back. The, they're pulling back on 
uh, you know, increasing deductibles and decreasing coverages, uh, they're getting rate. So I do see a little bit of a switch there, which could maybe even out the, the, the liability market a little bit, um, but it's not going to soften. Uh, I, I don't think anything's going to soften for a significant amount of time at this point. So the good thing is the gyms figured it out, right? They started getting the cleaning services. They started doing things the, the, the way they wanted to do it. They spread people out. Some are still spread out. Some are back to normal again. Um, but that got membership up. People felt more comfortable. You're going to be able to walk in the gym and some people are still going to have masks on at this point. There's hand washing stations everywhere you go. You're always wiping down your stuff. It made people feel good about the gym again. And I think that really propped it up. Um, you know, one of the conventions uh, and, and groups that I go to visit is URSA, uh, IHRSA, the, the biggest um, fitness convention in the world. And I've been the last couple of them. And it, man, there is some positivity going on in the fitness world right now. People are excited um, and, and for good reason. I, I don't see why they wouldn't be at this point. Things are really looking up. Um, they, you know, there's been there's been numbers out there saying a quarter of the gyms closed during the during the pandemic. Okay, that, that does make sense. We've seen some gymnastics facilities that were, you know, a little bit mom and pop, um, you know, they closed. Maybe some of them closed just because they didn't feel like doing it anymore. They got to the end and, and you know, things were good in the market. And we did have some, some smaller boutique gyms, but what we're seeing is the larger, more well-funded groups, the, the ownership groups of the larger, you know, franchise fitness facilities, the planets, the crunches, the orange theories, they're growing and they're growing at a clip. Um, and that's where, you know, almost like back in the day when you saw the doctor's offices being acquired by hospitals, that's just what happened. And there, there were very few private doctor's offices anymore. I think we're gonna see that. I think we're gonna see a lot of gyms go, hey, you have all this money, you have this cash behind you. You can uh, train our people, of course, yeah. Why don't we do that? You can pay my bills. I still wanna work there. I still love the community. The, the, these gyms are a community, especially, the smaller boutiques. They want to keep the community, and if they can stay in their building, then they're going to go with the bigger guys. So we are starting to see some of that stuff going. Next one. All right, we got the sports challenge. Let's take a little break, stretch out a little bit. All right, so we're going to put some questions up here, and you can act actively go on your computer and answer them. Um, and I'll give you a few seconds to answer. And then I'll tell you what the correct answer was. We'll see if you guys really are good at what you do here. All right, let's go to the first one. All right, CrossFit has become hugely popular in recent years. How many CrossFit affiliated gyms are there in the US? 1,500, 2,500, 5,000, or 7,500? Give you a few seconds and then we'll pop it up. Oh, you guys are good. The answer is 5,000. I wouldn't be surprised if that number gets closer to the 7,500 in, the uh, in the next 18 months. Very good, that was really good. All right, let's go on to the next one. Basketball is a popular sport, we ensure. As Adam told you guys, I'm a ref. Nobody likes the ref, but what are you gonna do? What are the dimensions of an NBA or college basketball court? 91.3 feet by 44.3 feet, 94 feet by 50, 102 feet by 48, or 110 feet by 42. This is something I had to know uh, to pass the test almost two decades ago. All right, let's see how good you guys are. <laughs> All right, you're, you're Googling this stuff. That's correct, 94 feet by 50 feet. I think you're all Googling it, but that's all right. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. All right, a couple more. Pilates is another class we love to ensure, which is not a classical Pilates mat exercise. This one's hard to Google. <laughs> See if we got some Pilates enthusiasts in the crowd today. Something I should be doing. All right, let's see what we have here. <laughs> you got it again. Oh, there's a little dispersion there though. White Fang is the correct answer. There's no White Fang, but uh, there's some dispersion. I think we, we need to work on our Pilates a little bit here. 
All right, one more. Curling, an Olympic favorite, is another class we cover. Don't do a ton of it, but we cover it. Which state is home to the most curling clubs? This Minnesota, Wisconsin, Maine, or Massachusetts? All right, let's see. Ah, we got you. We got you. Wisconsin actually has the most. Do you know that, Adam? No. <laughs> We did, we've done I a curling the, event at NSM. I saw the answer. I've been looking at the answer for a week and I still didn't know it. <laughs> All right, so now let's get to the meat and potatoes. Uh, this is the program appetite. Our coverage is what we like to do, what we don't like to do. And this is where Adam thrives. This is, this is his, uh, his deal. So take over, Adam. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so uh, this is a snapshot of our appetite. Um, obviously it goes a lot deeper than what we have listed here. So I'll kind of go through each each one that we got and um, kind of dive a little bit deeper than just what's listed. So amateur sports, basically every single amateur sport you can think of, we're going to handle it. Uh, you know, we, we have a really big book of the gymnastics and cheer. We have a lot of baseball facilities. We have a lot of basketball facilities. Um, pretty much any, I, I can't think of an amateur sport that we wouldn't handle. You know, we, we do everything from the, the singular basketball team that travels from here to there to, you know, um, an entire uh, Delaware Scholastic League, we write the whole thing. So thousands and thousands of participants. So very wide casting net there in terms of what we write in the youth sports space, basically anything you can think of. Um, fitness and recreation, privately owned boutique fitness studios, you know, the bar, dance, um, we're going into the franchises, which is, you know, your crunch fitness, your workout anytime, planet fitness, et cetera. You know, um, the the um, the fitness boxing type of thing where you go in and, and you're pounding the, the heavy bag nonstop. We love that type of stuff. We write it all day long. Moving on to uh, the health clubs. Again, this is a little bit different in terms of what we're looking for here and we're looking to expand in this area is we're trying to incorporate the fitness and spa. So, right, it's a, it's the all-in-one where you go and you get your workout in and then you, um, you know, you hit the showers and then you go to maybe a sauna, maybe like a, a little relaxing facial and then um, moving on to even doing nails and, and stuff like that. So we're trying to find the areas to where we want to grow. And this is one that we definitely want to grow into in the future, which is definitely uh, more on the, the health side, right? Because there's a lot of hybrid facilities out there and we really want to get into them because they're great business and we really want to write them. Uh, the college and university registered student organizations, if you can get your foot in the door, I know it's difficult for the colleges because you know, it's, it's a, definitely a niche in the marketplace, but they're they're great to write because you get tons of student uh, engagement in these organizations where it's as simple as getting a list of activities they have and the number of each uh the number of each students in each activity send it in it's one of the easiest things that we can do to turn around it's a strictly gl quote there's almost never any property involved we're looking at a gl quote only and they can get big big accounts upwards of 50 60 70 thousand dollars in premium uh, quite a few in the 15 to 25 range is the sweet spot there, but we ride them and we love them. Bring them our way. Uh, again, martial arts studios, we're looking for the non-contact stuff. So your cardio kickboxing, your cardio boxing, excellent, uh, very little liability, almost never see any claims from those types of facilities. They're great facilities. We'll write them all day long and we'll write them very, very competitively. Um, yoga studios, uh, one, once again, it's it's the boutiques, so your spin, yoga, bar, dance, uh, aerial silks, stuff like that, bring them our way, right in our wheelhouse, and we can turn those around really quickly. One area we're definitely looking to get into more is the bigger types of youth, youth fitness um, clubs and, and sports facilities. I, those of you who have kids out in the crowd, I know that you've been to these types of places. They're huge. They do everything. So you have your food, you have retail, you have 30 courts all indoors for multiple sports, lacrosse, basketball, soccer. They're convertible. They're big. They're big accounts. 
We love them, bring them our way, all the team. And then it gets you the foot in the door to write the teams. You get contacts through that. They're a great starting point. And uh, oftentimes those facilities, the liability is kind of limited because you have each team coming in. They often carry their own separate GL coverage and they name the facility as, as additional insured. And it's just locked down, super easy to write. And it's one area that we're really looking to get into um, and expand our footprint in that area. So moving on, uh, this goes right along with uh, our, our uh, appetite there is what we do, right? And as you can see here uh, from the list, it's everything. So you bring us an account, say it's one of the big sports facilities where you have, you own the build, the insured owns the building. They need property, right? They need umbrella, they need accident because they might have their own teams as well. They have uh, a fleet of trucks for transporting equipment. Maybe they have multiple facilities. They need sexual abuse coverage. We can do it all, right? So one of the big questions that we get uh, from uh, relatively new agents is general liability. And I don't know where they're coming from in the marketplace, but people ask us if our policies cover athletic participants. Of course they do, 100% of the time. I don't know who's in the space who isn't covering participants or limiting participant liability. We're doing a million dollars on the GL up front with a $3 million aggregate that's automatic. You can get an umbrella. We'll include participants in the umbrella. We'll write your auto. This, our cyber is fantastic. It's an add-on to the GL. It's got first and third party coverage. Uh, you need to hire a non-owned auto. We also put that in the GL or we can do standalone uh, auto if you need a, a fleet, if you have your trucks, if you have you know vehicles that the insured uses for business purposes. Um, you know, we'll tie that in and write that as a separate policy as well. Also in this, coming across in the separate policy is the accident, um, which accident, not all of our insureds need it, but the ones that do, it's really useful in protecting the general liability from no fault claims, because if you don't have it and a kid gets hurt at the facility, oftentimes the parents just want the medical bills covered. They don't really, maybe they have a great relationship with the person who's running the organization, the owner of the organization, they don't want to sue them, but they feel like they need a little bit of help in terms of the medical bills. We have accident coverage that can either be primary or excess, so it can drop down and help out immediately with all medical expenses, or it can just cover the out-of-pocket stuff that you know the parents are covering. Um, tying back into the property, uh, can we go back there a little bit? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so tying back into the property there, we have the equipment breakdown, which comes standard, and the in the marine, in case you do have the sports teams which are traveling from place to place, we can cover that. And of course, I already mentioned the hired and non-owned auto. Uh, finally, the, the crime coverage, so that's your employee dishonesty, you know, computer fraud, securities, robbery, et cetera. So really, if you look at it, we, we can offer everything that, that these insureds need, and we keep it all in-house, and we underwrite it all ourselves. So it's, it's just great. You know, Oftentimes we're handling, we're turning around quotes. We get something that needs all these lines. We can turn around within 24 hours. And that's kind of, if you need a super rush, we're turning around the same day for you, no problem. All right, thanks, Adam. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, I mean, that, so, so how do we differentiate ourselves other than what you just heard? I mean, Adam's, you know, the, the knowledge that he has is, is incredible and it's it's one way we differentiate ourselves how, how else do we do it you have to be different right there are other carriers they're going to be able to do most of the things that we do coverage wise or whatever it may be well how about an in-house claims department if you're thinking you're an mga why do you need a claims department you're not paying any of the claims yourself it doesn't you know what do you do what does the close the in-house claims department do well dave gagby already sits right outside this room here and he runs our claims department and he he's fantastic He's been on both sides. He was a defense counsel and plaintiff's counsel. He's worked at other MGAs. He's worked at TPAs. Um, he knows the ins and outs of what goes on in all of these claims, whether it's sports and wellness, whether it's coastal condo, addiction treatment. He knows what the attorneys are going to do. He's done it before. He knows the tricks. Um, so he's able to go into the, to the um, claim situation and understand it before it even happens. So what side is he on? He's on the client side. He's on the insured side 
to make sure that this claim is going to go the way it needs to go. Dave doesn't get involved in every claim we have. There, there's no way he could do it. But if things start to go sideways, that's where we jump in. Our claims department jumps in with our claims TPA, which is Athens administrators, who are fantastic. And they say, all right, where did this one go wrong? Or where, why are we veering off? Let's get it back on track. And where that comes from is, again, I'll go back to our CEO, Jeff McKernan. He started as a retail agent. Retail agents, what do you guys hate? Claims. You don't want to deal with them. You want to make money. You want to get more premium. You want to write more accounts. You don't want to deal with claims. And that's why we have who we have in-house. Dave has a team with of uh, four other people that help him to work on these claims and to make sure that nothing does go wrong. And if it does start to get a little crazy, we get it back on track. Um, it, it, incredible way to differentiate ourselves than just another MGA who may say, well, we don't deal with the claim, so you could just go talk to the, T the TPA. Well, that's not really going to do you much good. Um, there, everything is handled timely, appropriately, um, making sure that we do the right thing. It may not necessarily be, let's get them more limit, let's get them more payment. Let's do the right thing. What does the policy say, and what do they, what, what do they deserve? They paid for a policy, what do they deserve? Let's go over some recent wins. Of course, you guys need to know what we're writing, right? So we'll, we'll do some recent stuff. And Adam, you want to take uh, the first one? Sure, thanks. Um, so this particular account uh, was one that came in about a week before expiration in a difficult jurisdiction. Specifically, this was in uh, Long Island. Uh, it was five locations all on Long Island, which we all know is difficult on both the, the property and uh, you know just the general liability jurisdiction there. It, it's a it's a tough right. Um, the landlords can be, uh, you know, very difficult. They all require $5 million umbrellas. Otherwise, they tell you to get out of their building and they need it as soon as you get it on the date. You cannot be late. So we had an insured come to us. They had about $17 million in total property uh, values. They had 16,000 members between these five locations and they had over $100,000 in incurred losses in a four year period. We worked with the carrier, we worked with the agent, we got it done quick and we got it done appropriately and we got them the policy they needed and they were and we were able to have our agent retain the account and then write an account that we really like and we're gonna keep on the books for a long, long time. And this was previously coming from a competitor that's been known in the marketplace right now to be non-renewing accounts like this one, and taking large increases on all lines. They're sending notices on everything. So this insured came to it, their, their agent in the big panic up against the deadline, and we were able to turn it around for them and give them the coverage they needed. All right, I'll jump on the next one. So, you know, I call this one steady market. Um, this wasn't a top agent of ours. Uh, it was a newer agent that kind of just heard of us. A large gymnastics facility uh, in Texas. The, this, the facility had been in business since 1982. So there's, there's the first thing. Um, you know, you look at that and you say, all right, they know what they're doing. That, that's not easy. Um, they got a large rate increase. And, and it was, and when I say large rate increase, we're not just going to be the lowest price. We're never going to do that. We're the, we like to be called the, call ourselves the Cadillac. You know, we're, we're not going to just under, undercut the price. This was unusually large. So they came to us and they said, what do you think? I mean, it, this looks a little crazy to us, but it was six days before expiration. So a newer agent, Less than a week before expiration, we took a, we took a look at it. property values were low. The, there was the it just didn't make sense. We had to get them up. Rate was a little bit low. We're not going to be the lowest one. We let them know right off the bat that we're not going to probably come under this premium or under the, the, the rate. And they needed a wind deductible. They were in Texas. Um, they didn't have any loss issues. So that that was a big part of going back to Allied World and saying, hey, this is a really good account. They saw Allied World worked with us, they saw in business since 1982, all these issues, and they said, listen, or all, all these non-issues, I should say. They said, well, what about these property values? They said, oh no, we're, we're gonna get them up by 10%, we're gonna get this up by, and they saw that, they understood it. We got a great quote out to them, they bound it. Three weeks later, we got another great one from that same agent. So there you go, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Adam? Yeah, and this is, uh an example that I'm sure a lot of you can sympathize with and empathize with that we had an uh, agent come to us. They have a professional, they deal with a lot with professional sports, which is something that we don't do. However, they had a professional sports team with a policy in place who big surprise, they were about to start 
a side business that they thought were covered through their uh, professional sports team policy, which of course it doesn't, because what they were opening was a community-based center for people to come learn to skate, you know, uh, introduction to hockey, et cetera. So they're opening up, up basically a brand new business and they, they had a ton of experience, obviously, because they have a professional hockey team. These guys know how to skate. They know how to play hockey. They have coaches. They have everything you need except an insurance policy, right? So our agent came to us about 48 hours before they were set to hold their first practice and their first open skate. We got the applications. They needed a quick turnaround. We gave them uh, you know, a comprehensive uh, package, about $17,000 in total premium which included uh, you know, GL property and crime, which is what they needed. So again, uh, an agent that we do business with, they had an insured that we don't currently write, and they came to us to say, hey, we really need to get this done. What can you do for us? And we turned it around. We're the only ones who were able to provide that quote. They headed out everywhere. We were the only ones who were able to turn that around to them and get them their policy they needed in time. Thanks, Adam. All right, so we're getting towards the end here. I'm glad everybody's still with us, but why us? Um, you know, we've been talking for a while here. Um, and wh why would you want to do business with us? I put you will matter to us. It's kind of strange wording, isn't it? I, you will matter. It's because you don't, I, you don't, why don't you matter right now? Because we don't do business with you yet. And anyone who's on the call right now that we do business with, thank you very much, I appreciate it. But if you don't do business with us yet, you will matter to us. That first account you bring into us, whether we bind it or not, we're already working with you. You matter then. You're, we, we're going to get to the business. Um, we, we, service is so important in what we do, and we, we rely on that. And it's part of, it's part of the great things that we do. Um, like it says right there, it's worth some bonus. It's all we do. We don't do anything else. We're going to be there for you uh, when you do need that last-minute quote, that last-minute add-on, the endorsement that you need to get done in order for the team to practice on Saturday. We're going to do our hardest to get that done for you, um, and, and that's just the way we have to be nimble in what we do. We're a small team, and we do a lot of business, and there's a reason why we're able to get all that done. Um, you're going to have a designated underwriter. Um, we're not a one-to-one -one underwriter to UA, but I, I like, actually like that a little bit better. Our, our underwriting analysts get to see all the different underwriters and how they work and what they do, but you as an agent are going to get assigned an underwriter. You know who to go to. You're going to be able to call that person. You're going to email that person and say, I screwed up. I forgot I had to get this added on. Can we get it done? Absolutely. That's, that's, what, that's what we're here for. We're a program. We're not a carrier. We're able to be nimble and quick. Um, service standards I was just talking about, we, we want to make sure. We're, and guess what? If we're not getting to those standards, you let me know. And you let Adam know. And, and, and we get back to that. That's exactly why we go visit our people. We're, we're out of the office a lot. I go visit people. Adam goes and visit people. We want to make sure that we're always doing what we say. We can say we can do these webinars all day, but I was want to make, I want to make sure that we're actually doing it when it comes down to it. Risk management and loss control. I haven't really mentioned that yet. Allied World is fantastic when it comes to their risk management and, and loss control services. They have uh, the ability to give us access to all this different stuff that they put together over the years. We probably don't use it enough to be honest with you. Um, but it's there. It's it's available for you, for your clients. If they're getting into a new area of their business, uh, whether it's a gymnastics facility, it's going to do a little bit of what they like to call ninja. That's really not ninja. Um, then, you know, we can help them along. We can say, here are the best practices of what to do and where should the pads be? How thick should they be? What are the heights? What are the maximum heights? All those different things we can, Allied World is ready and willing to help with those, with those uh, risk management tools. And again, our in-house claims team, I can't stress it enough. I've been in the room with Dave Gagliardi, with the other, other members of our uh, claims team. Jay Belcher is our dedicated claims guy. I've been in the room with these guys after hurricanes when I was on the Coastal Condominium Program. And I'm talking to agents. And they're saying, we've had we have multiple buildings right now with no roofs on them. What are we going to do? How are you going to help us? And we say, we're going to have a call every single day. And as soon as we get off the call with you, we're going to call the TPA. The TPA is going to make sure they get somebody on site. We don't want any public adjusters in that building. So we're going to get there before the public adjusters do. Those are the things that we're able to do on the claim side that I want our agents to understand. Come to us. That's their job. That is what the claims people do. And they work hand in hand with myself, with Adam, the other underwriters, to make sure that we're always out ahead.
public adjusters can get in there, they can mess things up. We wanna make sure we can get out ahead of things and make sure that none of that happens, everybody's happy, and guess what? There's the word relationship again. It builds the relationship. I, I wanna know, after we do a couple pieces of business with you guys and get some business on the books, I wanna know your kids' names, I wanna know your favorite sport, you already know mine, what's yours? I, I wanna get to know you, and, and that's, that's how NSM has done business now for 32 years. Uh, Adam's been around longer than I have. I've been around for all, over eight years. And that's how we've always done it and how we always want to do it. Um, so I'm very interested in getting to know more of you and seeing what kind of accounts you have on the books right now that we can help you with. All right, so Q&A. If anyone has a question, feel free to unmute. Uh, ask that question. Um, anything you have. I may have missed it in the beginning, but do you also look at associations like soccer associations, things of that nature, and do you look at governing boards? Well, or I'm sorry, like governing bodies? Great, great question, actually. That's a, a question we get a ton. Um, governing bodies, we do not do. Um, the, the, the larger governing bodies. We can look at associations. Um, the smaller associations, we absolutely can take a look at. We do write them this day. Um, but the governing bodies, uh, we do not ensure at this point. Yeah, definitely the associations. Uh, we, we do write the Delaware uh, Interscholastic Athletic Association. So that's one that's personally one of my accounts. And we write that and we've had it on our books for quite some time. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. What about a community nonprofit swimming pool? Yep. Profit, nonprofit. We can take a look at all that stuff. What if they have a diving board and a uh, chute? Yeah, so the, the chutes are funny, right? They, um, depending on height and, and what it does, if it's gonna twist or if it's gonna go straight down. We, there are some uh, slides that we will exclude that we don't want to write. Um, there aren't many high dives anymore from what we've seen. I think a lot of people got rid of their high dives. Um, but again, high dive might be tough. Regular diving boards, totally fine. Slides, we'll just underwrite. You know, it's all about getting it in and seeing it, and we'll just underwrite our way through it. Do you have a supplemental app? Yeah, we can send supplemental apps. Uh, if you want to get in, my our contact info, mine and Adams will be on the last slide. Um, and you, absolutely, we can send anything out to you that you need. Just let us know. What carriers do you see as your I don't know competition in this uh, in this realm. Sure, um, Philadelphia has always been one. Um, you know they're they're uh, they're big, they're good at what they do. Um, so they're always going to be one. K and K has been one. Um, they've gone through some some issues with carriers, but they're always going to be around. Um, Great American, we've we've seen more often lately, just kind of on, on one offs and things like that. Adam, what else are you seeing? Uh, Markel is definitely a, a player in the in the space, and then really there's a lot of regional mutuals that that will step in and write facilities that look just come out of left field because it's maybe someone we don't see uh, on an everyday basis. But there's a lot of one-off carriers out there who probably don't really know what they're doing, but will step in and write you know facilities at probably two-thirds the cost that they should be paying. So there's definitely some one-offs out there. You kind of expect them to go away after some time, but Chris really hit the head on our, our most consistent competitors there. I, I called on one that was with um, Liberty Mutual, and I was kind of surprised Liberty Mutual was writing health clubs. Yep, we actually yeah, just brought they're them up. Um, they're definitely a player. Uh, I just ran into them as well in, in Texas uh, on a, on a tennis club. Like I said, um, it, it's Texas is really tough right now, as I'm sure we all know, especially after that CAD incident and uh, Liberty came in and it was, it's a good looking facility. I wish I could have written it myself, but really they just, they really undercut. And, um, you know, that's not something that we're gonna do. We're gonna be here for the long term. So I don't see that being sustainable to come in with super cheap rates, especially on the property side right now in Texas. And that's just something that they did and we're gonna have to live with it. 
Well, I, I haven't been involved in your particular program, but have done business a number of years uh, with care providers, and NSM does a great job. I appreciate that. Thank you Thank very you. much. Care providers is a great, great program. Been around for a long time. They're they're good at what they do. All right. Any other questions we can think of? Did any other come yes, in we, on that? We do have some that came in on the chat. If you can't see them, I can feed them to you here. Let me know if you yeah, can thanks, see them. Yeah, thanks, Liz. That would be great. Okay. First question. Are there going to be direct billing options with the tech upgrade? I think that's in reference to the portal. Great question. Um, that is something that's going to come. It won't be on the first iteration of the portal. Um, that takes a lot of back-end work, uh, but that's something that NSM as a whole is getting closer to. Um, and again, that's that's technological in itself. So that, that back-end work has to come kind of easily in order for us to get it under the portal. So initially we're not gonna have it, but stay tuned for that because it's it's being worked on as we speak. Great, next question. What paper do you write on for gyms? Okay, so the, the carrier itself is Allied World and they the admitted paper is called Vantapro. And then they have a couple other of, uh, you know, non-admitted papers that, that we use if, right. if we need to. So we, we're, we right. can write admitted or not admitted. That's another great point. Awesome. Next question. Do you allow insurance to offer daycare services or after school programs for people working out on site? We do. Adam, do you want to jump on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is one of the questions that we get all the time, especially when it comes to gymnastics and fitness facilities is what do, what do we do? Um, you know, we're going to think about offered child mining services. Uh, we just make sure that there's checks and balances in place in terms of um, you know, the type of facility that you're in, your background checks on, on employees, and uh, just make sure that we have some code of conduct standards when dealing with youth, because we all know that can be a sensitive issue. But, you know, that's built into our rates, so it's something that we expect our insureds to do. And um, we've handled it in the past and had very few incidents, so definitely something we're willing to offer there. Great. Next question. Are supplemental applications needed for certain coverage lines? So we do ask for supplementals and, and what we get out of that mostly is the, how we rate the liability lines. Uh, we have our own supplementals. We often can look at other carrier supplementals if it's something you've already completed. Uh, we may need to ask you a few more questions in addition. Um, and then accord applications would we would need for property. Um, so yeah, supplementals, you're gonna get a lot of good uh, questions out of those. So we, we do require them for the liability lines. Got it. Next question, do you offer workers comp with these programs? Workers comp doesn't come directly out of the sports and wellness program. We do, as one of the programs you saw on the previous slide, have a uh, workers comp, it's called all comp uh, division here. And, and they're fantastic. They have access to, I wanna say at this point, maybe dozens of carriers, uh, if not dozens, it's close to it. And um, we are able to utilize them when it makes sense. Um, you know, when, when there are enough employees that uh, getting a separate quote would make sense, but we are able to kind of package that together and give you guys the ability to control more of that business if, if it makes sense to you. Great. Right. A uh, couple more questions. We'll see how many we can get to. Um, are supplemental uh, applications available online? They are on there. And I think I think they're on. They they our newest ones may not be, and if they're not, we'll make sure we get them on. But again, email us, shoot us a note, whether it's Adam and I or Liz, and we'll send you the ones that that, that we have. But I, from what I remember, I think the most recent um, update to the uh, website is that the, they were on there. I, I just looked at there. On there like, yeah, there are two or three pages. They're super easy. I mean, they're just exposure and then employment standards, background checks, stuff like that that I already mentioned. And then our supplement is actually really flexible in terms of you really it's a it's a separate app and your general liability is going to lead you to where you need to complete the supplemental app. So oftentimes you really only have maybe a handful of extra questions that you have to complete. So it's really like a three or four page app for general liability. It's really nice. Great, here's a specific question. I have a mega church that has a sports ministry for minors and adults with various sports. Would you be able to entertain as a whole or individual? 
That would be individual, but I'd love for CPS to take a look at the church and we could take a look at the sports. We've done that many, many times. We, we partner with CPS um, a good amount of times and just kind of separate that out and make it easy for you guys to just go to NSM for both of those coverages. So yeah, I, I'd love to take a look at that. Ryan, why don't you advance to the next slide with the contact info while we finish up so people can take a screen grab and, and jot down Chris and Adam's contact info. Uh, another question, are you able to offer sexual abuse coverage up to a million? Are there stringent requirements? Yes, we can offer that coverage up to a million. Um, One million, two million would be the coverage actually. And yeah, there, there are going to be requirements. We're going to ask you the questions. We're going to make sure that there's uh, background checks and there's training and there's all that stuff. But um, for the most part, we see that, that the people that need it are the ones that actually do a good job with that. And, and we're able to give them those limits. Uh, Another specific question. Do you have a market for martial arts studios that do sparring for boxing or kickboxing or Brazilian joy jiu-jitsu or grappling-based arts? So after these types of events and, and marketing pushes, we do get that question a ton. Um, we don't love it. Uh, if, if you're talking maybe more cardio than sparring and we can take a look at the sparring and see what it's like and the protections around it, again, underwrite it we can take a look at them. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you are on the ground the whole time, which doesn't seem that bad, but we've seen some injuries come out of that. So we often don't write those, and Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, if we've done any of that recently, but we, I, we try to stay away from the sparring. Yeah, generally, but uh, what you'll see, a lot of these facilities that uh, they'll be affiliated with, you know, just for example, USA Boxing, and then, you know, there's a lot of different affiliations where you have to be approved in, with certain organizations to do these types of things. And the, you can, these facilities will often buy into, as part of their membership, an insurance package where they're covered separately for those types of activities. So then on our end, we can exclude the sparring exclude what we don't want and then cover the rest which their you know their association coverage or where they buy in doesn't cover so we we do write a lot of these facilities but we need to make sure that they have the proper coverage in place for if they're doing sparring which we don't necessarily love and i think we'll squeeze in one more question before we need to wrap do you cover the five boroughs of new york we do Yes, we do. It's, it's going to be on non-emitted paper, but we, we do cover. And if you're an agent from New York, you send it directly to this guy right here. Yep. I'll be handling it. New York's my specialty. I love <laughs> it. So if that's it, Liz, um, I just want to say thanks. Um, thanks to everybody that's still on the line. Um, this was great. Uh, hopefully you got a lot of information out of here. If you didn't, get in touch with me. Get in touch with Adam. Um, we'll, we'll happy to talk to you. I just want to finish 2022 strong. So if we can help you finish strong, that means we finish strong. So shoot them over. Uh, we'll be we'll be blunt. We'll be right to the point. We can or we can't, and we'll move on. Nobody wants to waste time, right? So again, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in, and I'm excited to do this again and, and talk to more of you. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone.